the stream going up yet? <laughs> Sounds good. Oh, oh. Oh, there we are. Yep. My stream's my stream's going. I'm getting a lovely little ad. Uh let me I need to get past the ads. Sorry if everyone's just listening to us work out stuff. There we go. Yeah. Yeah, from what I can tell everything looks good. How's it how's it looking down in the chat? Cool. Okay, well, so you're saying you can only hear me. Actually, yeah, let me, let me jump in. I can't. Yeah, I can't hear you on the actual stream. Uh, I have no idea, unfortunately. Better? Can you hear me now? I think we fixed it. Uh, sorry, it's, I'm a few seconds behind, it's so okay, I'll catch up. But I'm pretty oh. sure I fixed it because I'm seeing audio flashes on my end. It was a setting. Gotcha. So okay, I think cool. we're good because I can see audio bouncing on my end. So we'll give it some delay time and make sure that everyone hears me because I know the time delay now. sucks. Um... But yeah, once you guys give me the go ahead, I figured out what the setting was, so. Sense, I'm trying to care for you as well. All right, no, I can hear it on my end now, so we're good. There, hey, yep, there you are. It. Cool. Yeah, it was a setting. It was a setting. <laughs> That's a... Uh, yeah, no, I was like, I know I'm not on mute because I have a, a mic that literally shows me I'm not muted by being big, red, and glowy. <laughs> but yeah, no, it was, it was a Discord, or not a Discord, a... Uh, OBS setting. But yes, hello and welcome to Trek Central. Um, I'm Bree. I will be the host of Trek Central for the foreseeable future. And we are joined by our lovely guest, Jesse. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi. Yeah. For those of you who don't know me, I run a channel called Jesse Gender, where I talk mostly about Star Trek, but about any random geek culture stuff that discusses like social political issues and Mostly also rant about Star Trek for 90% of the time, so. <laughs> <laughs> and also educate about LGBTQ stuff as well, so. Yeah. So today we're going to be kind of just chit-chatting about a few topics. Uh, Picard having ended, we, we figured that would be a good topic to talk about is just, you know, what was our overall, now that the whole show has been put out, kind of get an overall sense of how everyone was feeling about the show. So that's kind of what we're going to be going for today. Um, and I think the first thing we wanted to start with was kind of just what was your overall opinion? And I'm going to pass that off to you of what you thought the overall opinion of show start to finish was. I mean, my my general opinion on it was that I thought it was a really, really strong first season and that I really loved. Um, I, I loved that kind of like discovery season one that it felt like it had a really strong message that it wanted to say and that it kind of came out of the gate swinging in that aspect and i think as the season went on it kind of lost its way here and there mm -hmm. um that like i think it's part of the growing pains of any sort of star trek first season yeah first season um, tends to have a bumpy road as we've seen ex Exactly. It it's it's a long road getting from from there, from there to, to here. It. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I had to. Yep, yep, yep. You set me up, and I just I just uh, heat it off, <laughs> or you teed me up, and I went swinging. There's a that's the right metaphor. <laughs> but yeah, no, I think I think it was a very strong first season that I I think like explored a lot of really good ideas. I think it had it it. it I don't think it managed to achieve everything it set out to achieve, yeah. but the things that it did actually get to, like exploring the idea of the synths, uh, kind of wrapping up some stuff about um, from Nemesis with Data and Data's death and things like that, and then also sort of like dealing with 
Picard and like showing us a different aspect of not only just Picard, but of like the Star Trek world in general, like mm-hmm. getting like a civilian side of things. I think it did all those in spades. Yeah. And I think just some other ideas like its discussion of the Borg and the XBs and some yeah. other things I think got lost in the weeds. Yeah, and that was one of the things I liked the most, but also one of the things I wish they had expanded on the most was mm-hmm. the Borg and the XBs. Like I have so many questions. Um, like where, why, why, how did it start? You know, what was the, what was the motive for the true mode? And I'm, I'm sure some of this might be revealed in the future. Um, mm-hmm. but I also, um, it, it wouldn't vibe with what my, uh, my, my personal theory of what season two is going to look like, but I'll get to that later. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. but, uh, but I, I would have liked to see more, uh, explo- uh, exploration of the XBs and even, even actually the, the androids, but more specifically the ones that, you know, the synth androids. I think it was mentioned, you know, in one of our previous live streams, like how did they successfully get the synth attack to go through? You know, was it hacking? Was it something that was placed in there, you know, pr- beforehand? You know, there's a lot of questions that I think I would have liked to see answered. But again, it's uh, it's the constraints of 10 episodes. And I think that's one of my biggest complaints is the constraint of 10 episodes. Yeah, I like I I really agree because there's so much. I mean, it felt like, and I said this in my like big overall review, um, is that I feel like this season had so many good ideas. Like I feel like the writers were sitting down in the room and were like, "This is a cool idea. This is a cool idea," and they they kind of put it all uh, in the yeah, show. They put a lot of ideas in there, <laughs> and then just didn't have enough time to to build off of it. Because I agree with you. I think for me, honestly, like everything, like. Honestly, the thing for me that was the most interesting was the XBs. Like, I loved that recontextualization of the Borg as, like... People. Yeah, Yeah. and, like, that's, like, what Star Trek does its best, taking these villains and then making us care for them in a way that, like, I never would have thought we would have been able to do on such a large scale. Yeah. I mean, I actually uh, felt terrible when the Borg got jettisoned into space. Like, that was heartbreaking i was like why do i feel bad about these borg <laughs> like i didn't yeah know, i would never i would have been like yeah fuck the borg any other time but <laughs> face but like, them all dang it yeah, face them. <laughs> but, but yeah no like getting to see the humanity underneath or whatever species underneath is it's humbling and it, it's one of the reasons i really wish that they'd expanded on it um is because yeah you met hugh and you've met seven and like you've seen a few liberated borg um but you know it, they didn't hit on it on a, like a, like they said a mass scale like they did in Picard and it kind of sh- yeah. they said you know we didn't even know it could be done so it kind of makes you think all those times that that they just destroyed the Borg it makes you feel a little bit bad going back realizing like oh they could have been saved in a way um, they're not mindless completely. Um, yeah, and I and I like it, it built off. I know you. We were talking before the stream that you said you hadn't seen some of the movies, yeah. but the, it it builds off. There's a scene in um, First Contact that I one of my favorite scenes in that movie. And I hope you don't mind mild oh, spoilers no, if you no, don't mind. I know say. everything that happens in every movie. That's the thing. <laughs> gotcha. um, I've I've seen every <laughs> and read every synopsis, but having seen them all, I have not. <laughs> but I know yeah. I know the plot for every movie, so there is no spoilers. <laughs> cool. Well, there, there's a scene in that movie that I, I think is one of the best scenes in the movie where Picard kills two of the Borg and another character uh, says like, oh, these were two of your guys. And Picard's like, yeah, this is one of the ensigns, Ensign Lynch. Mm-hmm. And he just doesn't have any care yeah. at all that it was one of his his own people that he had just murdered, yep. uh, even though they were Borg now. And so I really like that they they kind of extrapolate on that sort of like problem that picard clearly has yeah even when um, he went on the ship at first like he, yeah he just it was a struggle for him to see them as anything other than borg mm-hmm. and that line he says in the episode where it's like they're not they're victims not monsters yes. like that's such a that's yeah. such a that is like the most star trek of star trek yeah. lines that i think you could deliver there yeah it's a super powerful line and we have a donation so let's see what that is hell um, yeah He's he yeah. So in regards to Picard, uh, started well, bogged down a lot by its own narrative, and didn't need to kill Hugh or Ichab. 
Uh, too many ships in the battle, and Riker should have arrived in a 1701E. <laughs> that, is a lot, that is a lot to take in. Um, yeah, I, 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 I agree with all of that except for the E. Yeah. It should have been... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, but sorry, I interrupted I actually, you. No, you're good. I only actually one of the things I do disagree with is I I, I have made a point that I, I don't necessarily disagree. I don't necessarily agree or disagree with the Echeb death. I maybe mm -hmm. I I think for why they made I think for seven, the way they wanted to uh, write her with her history, it was a required trauma. Something that severe would push her over the edge. And I think that's why mm -hmm. they did it. I don't think it was spiteful, like a lot of people are saying. Um, no. and not saying that this is what that person, I just, I've seen a lot of people who are like, oh, they just, they're killing legacy characters to kill them. Um, the, no. the, the, the Hugh one, I agree. I did not want to see Hugh die. And I, I was very upset by that one. Um, I actually do, I actually would have liked to see more space. Like I wouldn't say there were that many space battles. I can only think of. I think there's only one. the the, yeah. the Romulan one yeah, in uh, one. Absolute Candor. So, yeah. yeah. So I would actually disagree with that and say that it would have needed more space battles. Um, personally, <sighs> I think having a maybe not even a battle, but I don't. I wouldn't agree that there was too many because there was only one. Um, yeah, so, and I, 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 I well placed. I also uh, so to also respond to it. Mm -hmm. I think I agree with you completely. Like, I, I get the feel like. I understand why certain people were upset at Echeb's death because he's a character that meant a lot to to a lot of people. I'm yeah. sure when watching um, Voyager, um, like if they had done that to like Seven, I would have been Ooh. super super upset because yeah. she was one of my personal favorites. Just to like pick a random character, but um, but I also get like it does give you a shorthand for the story that they wanted to take Seven on, and I think the story that they did take Seven on was while. Well, I think could have been stronger if they had had more episodes, which again is the common yeah. refrain. Um, I think was the right road to take her down. Um, I, I actually really adored Seven of Nine, and Jerry Ryan's performance was fantastic. Agreed. Um, so yeah, so I I I, I agree with uh, you on Echeb. I don't think it was a bad choice to kill him off, though. I certainly understand people being upset. I mean, that's You're there's a there's a reason they used yeah. Echeb. Yeah, that was the point. Um, and I also agree that like Hugh being killed, I think I think part of like what frustrates me about Hugh to I have so many thoughts on Hugh's death. One, I think they like didn't understand how much people he would mattered. connect with him. Yeah, he he mattered yeah. people in a way I don't think that they expected. But mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I I yeah Hugh Hugh's a character you don't expect to connect with as much as you do, but there's something about him. Yeah. And it, I think it's part of it's Jonathan Del Arco who just like that scene where he like you don't realize how much you need it in that scene where he he meets Picard for the first time oh, in the show and they just hug ah, I cried. and it like <laughs> he, I, I didn't realize as I watched that I was just like I had no idea how much I just I needed that like moment of like true sincerity and kindness um it was such a breath of fresh air and and jonathan del arco just brought because that was a an, apparently an ad lib from from yeah. arco he said it was um he and this is why it made me cry more when i watched it through later um he said mm -hmm. that he envisioned his dad who had passed away and ha what he would do if he had seen his dad who had died and i my dad having passed away watching mm -hmm. that embrace i can seriously feel the emotion in in the embrace and i i can see like the method acting in his mind when he when he yeah because like yeah i that's that that would be a big powerful hug yeah it, it was it, it just it would meant so much so yeah i i so like when you kill him off i i think what frustrates me the most about it is that it feels like it wasn't worth anything yeah. like it didn't it didn't, it didn't progress the story yeah and and i think again i think that's just a problem with like a lot of the season in general is that like there's these points that like oh that's super interesting i love that idea mm -hmm. and there's just no payoff because it feels like they don't have time like with right. hugh i think was the biggest and most egregious one but you even see that with like seven becoming the board queen which is mm -hmm. again on paper fantastic and even the execution is really well done it's just mm -hmm. it has no lasting impact right. which feels like a waste and so it just sort of like makes me feel it, it just it, it it hurts to see sort of Hugh be sacrificed at the altar of like 
oh, we're going to like add stakes to this, mm-hmm. but it just ultimately doesn't go anywhere. It's the same thing that they did with, ironically, a different hue in, in Discovery. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then the, that was what oh, we sorry. Had, I was going to say, we can even get into that because I know we have discovery stuff we're talking about later. Um, but yeah, mm-hmm. we can talk about some stuff there too. But I would agree with you on that point for sure. Yeah. And then one last point I want to say off of uh, Sean's comment that um, I, I totally, I actually completely agree with. He says that, that too many ships in battle bit. Oh, too um, many ships in battle. I thought it said too yeah. many spaceship battles. I'm sorry, I have my glasses here with me just in case things get bad. <laughs> but as you can see, it's already gotten bad. Um, I, agree oh, yeah, then. I do agree then. There was a lot of spaceships for that battle. <laughs> and- I think it's the, yeah, I think it's the problem with like, this is, a, I mean, this, as someone who is like a defender of modern Trek, I do think that that's a problem with modern Trek is that they just have this like, everything needs to be this like huge escalation, like, the in the in the Kelvin time the movies like the Enterprise is like five times bigger than the Enterprise and the like just it, everything just scaled bigger right and it's just like I don't need a billion ships in fact it makes it makes it makes it feel more intimate intense if you have like twenty ships instead of like five hundred mm-hmm. um, and uh, I mean it's it's it feels like a minor point in the overall thing but it's just kind of funny of like the yeah, everything needs to be bigger, and that's cooler. I'm like, eh, you don't need to do that. Yeah, bigger's not always better, especially when you're taxing, and this is something that was brought up in our last stream before things got uh, shifted a little, was mm-hmm. was the by, by doing that, they taxed the uh, special effects team to the point that it took a, a, took a hit. So, yeah. And that's the unfortunate part. You never want to tax your special effects team to the point that it, it affects the final product exactly and i mean that's i mean if you want to get into that whole discussion that's a whole other discussion about like the 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 misuse of visual effects in just the movie industry in general yeah that is definitely a whole other topic that i could talk about for literally ever (laughs) yeah (laughs) yep yep yeah so i think um one of the next things this was something you actually wanted to talk about was Mm. um the evolution of picard on screen since we've seen him over the over yeah over the years so well, the reason I want to talk about this is because I've seen it come up in like a lot of conversations about like how Picard in this show didn't feel like Picard uh, for a lot of people based off of like where we had seen him in The Next Generation. And and for me, and I, again, this is one of those like I totally understand where people feel like he he feels off from from where he was before. But I think like what I really enjoyed about this season and what i think really really works and come through and comes through in so many ways is that this show basically deconstructs not only picard but a lot of like the tropes of of trek in general Mm -hmm. a sense of like star trek has always been this show where we go to a planet we show up make make some big proclamations and pronouncements and then we disappear into the, the great beyond into the next adventure um And the only other show that didn't do that was Deep Space Nine. And so what I loved about this show was that it kind of like forced us to look at Picard through that lens of like someone who, who, who never sticks around, Mm -hmm. who doesn't like hold himself accountable to his decisions and saying like, well, this guy who comes in, makes these big, like, grand sweeping moralizations and statements, and then just disappears and doesn't, like, see the fruits of his labor, what does that actually do to the people who are left behind in a, in a substantive way? Um, like, it, it, it sort of questions Picard, and it questions, like, Star Trek and deconstructs Star Trek as a whole. Mm-hmm. And, I, and, I, and I particularly loved the show for that reason, that it sort of, like, forced us to, to grapple... Yeah, so exactly. It. And because I agree with you completely, it I like that and Deep Space Nine so, and Discovery so much because it humanizes their the cast. Yeah, exactly. It like makes them feel like real instead yeah. of just um, people you could actually meet and not like a a, a shining figure of perfection. <laughs> <laughs> which isn't always bad i mean that's one of the reasons i like going back and watching you know the original series is like it's it's fun to have that sometimes but not you know you can always mix it up a little too and i think that's yeah, why it's... i like all all trek is i enjoy all star trek because i like the variety but oh we exactly another we do oh favorite character oh favorite character in picard yeah um 
Favorite character, uh, they really enjoyed Rafi and Laris. Or Laris, Laris. Um, who was your Another character, character I wish. Oh, oh yeah. okay. <laughs> so if I had to think about it, I think easily... I mean, if I had to go just overall seven of nine, which See, is a bit was, of a cheat because I, I, I love say. her. I was like, I don't want to <laughs> cheat and say seven because, she, you know, it's seven. So maybe mm -hmm. we can say, maybe we can, because it's also what I've said. <laughs> maybe we can narrow yeah. it down to who is our favorite uh, non new character. character. Yeah. I think, I think of all of them, I think my personal favorite was definitely Rios. I, okay, same. No, yeah. I I also have a, a bit of a problem with the man with like stubble beards yeah. and accent, and that man did all the accents. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm like, you know what? But I think like he just his performance is so so strong in every episode. Like Santiago Cabrera just nails it, and he just like has this like really engaging charisma every time he's on screen. But then also makes you feel like there's this like weight behind him, and I'm I. I'm sad we only got like one episode really focusing on this character because I'm I'm excited to see more with Rios because I think every scene he in he's in he just steals the show. Yeah, I know I agree. Um, sorry, I'm gonna up my volume because apparently I'm quiet, <laughs> um, <laughs> which is weird because I had my volume down because I'm normally not quiet. Um, yep. <laughs> but <laughs> but yeah, so I agree. Um, I've I've been pushing around the hashtag Good Guy Rios a lot, and I agree because <laughs> everything he does is so pure of heart like he did not mm -hmm. do anything in the show that could be seen at least in my eyes as like selfish or rude or anything that was not like coming from someone with a big heart like i yeah. love this man he is perfect and he is just a great character everything about that character was just it's someone that you you would want to know that he is the exactly. kind of person you'd want to have as your friend more than anyone else i think <laughs> You just made me realize, like, something you just said there was, like, he's how you do, like, the sort of, like, broody, broody character well. Yeah. <laughs> like, Narek, Narek is how you do a broody character badly. Like, the, I'm, I'm dark and deep. Um, not that it, there's parts of Narek that I, yeah. I thought were interesting, but Jenny's like, I'm dark and moody. Whereas, like, Rios is like, he's broody. But he also like when he when he comes out of his shell, you like see heart there. You see, like, yeah. him having fun and him, like, enjoying himself and making jokes. But he still has, like, the, like... Like this, this obviously like deep trauma mm -hmm. that is 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 in there with uh with his with his captain, which is also a storyline that I thought was super fascinating and yeah. like some people thought were was a bit dark for Trek, but and, I thought made sense. And see, I am one of the biggest pushers of that being probably one of my favorite. That's and I was gonna ask what your favorite episode was after we talked mm -hmm. about the the whole evolution of Picard, but I'm, I'll just we can just talk about that now on top of the favorite yeah. characters, mm -hmm. but. I was gonna say Broken Pieces might actually be. It, it was in the contender. I had three picked out, and Broken Pieces was one of the one of the ones I had narrowed down to the top two, specifically because that storyline hits so insanely close to home. Because, um, like as I had said, mm -hmm. I lost a father, and I did lose him to suicide, and I lost him when I was in the military, fresh in the military, in fact. So the whole storyline of being in the military, suffering through losing someone you love, and still trying to juggle military life and not succeeding in doing so is ex mm. the exact same story that my like, that happened to me like it literally par like par for the course it got to the point where like you know i had a six-year contract and and i ended up doing four years i was still honorable discharge and all but it was more of like a hey trauma's getting to you and it's literally the exact yeah. same thing that happened to to uh rios in the show and i think that's why i like the episode so much it's why I connect yeah. with the character so much. Like it's one of the best episodes for me. I just really I, I I love the character so much. It's I could talk about that whole episode for way too long, but I'm not gonna. So what was your favorite yeah. episode? I mean mine mine feels <laughs> mine feels like it has less weight to it, but no, it's okay. um, I like and I it's... like fun episodes too. That's just <laughs> My my favorite episode is one that I feel like no one else is is no one else's favorite episode, but it's Stardust City Rag. I, I oh, that was in my contenders for top three. That was my number. Good. Third, that was my third one, and I liked that one a lot too because I like I like fun because I was like, do I want to go for like favorite for emotional reasons? Do I want to go favorite because it was fun to watch? And yeah, mm. I like that. What I what uh, well, there's so many reasons I love the episode. One is for the fun. Like it, it was an episode mm. where it's just like. There's so much like weight going on throughout Picard that that was just an episode of like yeah we're just gonna have Picard like do his French accent yeah. and it is so much fun <laughs> uh, 
and being ridiculous and we get this like cool heist kind of plot yeah. but it also like Very showed ocean. us character with- it was like the deep space nine oceans 11 style episode <laughs> exactly but we have a donation uh, real quick let me read that oh, yep. before it disappears uh would it be possible for picard to be reinstated into starfleet since his consciousness is merely a copy from the original that's probably something we're going to get into when we get back on the topic of uh, evolution of picard um so yes. uh, don't let me forget yeah. that because i will add that into the conversation for sure gotcha but, yeah and i have many thoughts on that yes, too I do too. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah uh to and the other thing with that episode so two things with uh star to city ragway i loved it is like while i do love modern trek like i love discovery i love mm-hmm. picard uh despite some problems here and there one of the things i do really miss about um about like older trek is the sort of like episodes where i just got to exist with the characters yeah. and just have fun like it's i love and fun and lighthearted it, in place of some of the dark trauma in the shows exactly <laughs> and like it's like when i look at discovery it's like they're because we've all been kind of like locked indoors recently i've been re-watching star trek and it's like i want to rewatch discovery but it's hard for me to like just pick it's not even darkness it's like it's just like hard for me to like pick one episode just like i'm gonna watch one yeah. because well, it's also so serialized plot. yeah i was gonna say it's whole plot but i was gonna say for mm-hmm. me i'm trying to watch the star treks in in opposition i'm trying to watch the star treks uh like plot lines except for the zindi war arc i gave an exception mm-hmm. for that but like um i'm trying to find plot lines of star trek that are gonna like lift my spirits a little bit like you know victory stuff so that's why like zindi war arc yeah sad things happen but like victory and then you know um, I don't know. I was just trying to find goofy things. I was like, you know, Voyager post season four was an option, but mm-hmm. yeah, I've also been rewatching Star Treks, but, but I've been trying to find ones that are going to cheer me up. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But yeah. So yeah, I loved it for that. And then, and then also it was like the seven of nine episode, which mm-hmm. makes warms my heart. Yeah. So, <laughs> but so, oh yeah, we were, yeah. Before we got on topic, we were talking about the evolution yeah. of Picard on screen. Um, but uh, I do forget where we left off when we were talking about that. Well, we were talking about like Picard being deconstructed uh, in terms of like like breaking down like his character oh, and yeah. the ideas behind Trek, and yeah. then we also had um, the the comment about like can his consciousness is his consciousness a copy from the original yeah. and everything like that. Well, I was talking about like where we had left off before we got distracted, but I, I remembered now. Mm-hmm. But um, so yeah, I think um I, another one on top of that another thing that i had seen an argument of of like the changing in picard's personality a little bit was his relationship with eleanor but i actually appreciated mm-hmm. showing that just because you don't as someone who does not like children um <laughs> just because you don't <laughs> like kids does not mean there is not a child that can like steal your heart kind of thing like my mm-hmm. next door bless their heart they're moving now and it's really sad but like um um, like my neighbor's kid probably the exception for me like the only Mm. exception i can think of um but i it's it's just just like you know it's the right circumstances things require correct circumstances you put the captain of a ship with a bunch of other people's children running up on the bridge or into him in the hallways when he's trying to do his job no he's not gonna like kids and i wouldn't yeah. either like but if you get <laughs> him in a situation where he just organically has a relationship with a kid and like builds like a father son or a grandfather or grandson relationship it feels real it doesn't feel forced to me in that sense so i did like that that level yeah. of evolution that's one of those things where i saw a little bit of complaints from but that i would heavily disagree with just because just because you don't like all of like you know like just because you don't like kids doesn't mean you can't have like a kid that you you connect with so yeah and it like it it feeds also into that idea of like because he does kind of leave elnor for a long length of time which also feels not realizing his actions exactly and like not realizing that the impact that he personally has Mm -hmm. like sometimes he just i feel like picard feels like this guy's like i came and i did the thing and then (laughs) realizing like yeah, and not realizing that he just, he means something to these people. And that was something I wish, like, they started to explore it. And I wish that they had, had evolved it a little bit more with, like, Elnor and Picard reconnecting. Mm-hmm. Because that, I feel like that was another plot thread that I wish had been had been pulled out a little bit more. Because yeah. they separate them a few episodes after they get reunited. I would have loved to and see I would have, Elnor. <laughs> yeah, I would have loved, I loved the moment where, like, Elnor kind of pushes back at Picard. Mm-hmm. And says like, "Oh, you only came here because I'm useful to you." Mm-hmm. And I would have liked to see them like when they were on back on La Serena, like having moments of like him being like, "What did I miss? Like, how did I? Try I miss so much of your yeah. life." Yeah. 
No, I absolutely agree. So then, yeah, I guess rolling into that, we can we can talk about the uh, the comment about is is Picard Picard, and would he be able to be reinstated, or would it be like a whole new thing? Mm-hmm. Uh, given how they've presented it so far, I I don't know enough about the technology they use, but what they've presented thus far, it seems like it's truly his consciousness. However, that raises the whole philosophical argument of what is consciousness and is that his consciousness or is it a computer simulation of his consciousness? If that's the case, I would argue he's not Picard anymore. He's a computer simulation of Picard. If it's, mm-hmm. I just, that's, it's, it's this whole like philosophical argument that, that we could have forever. And that's probably one of my biggest concerns with trying to find where I sit with that argument is like i don't know enough about it to say whether i think he is or is not the same person and i think like yeah it's difficult to say because it's one of those that i think we have to wait until season two before we can like really Mm -hmm. dig deep into that philosophy because i i actually did a whole video on my channel to plug my stuff a little bit but um where i like talked about all the philosophy like the ship of theseus argument or like how does memory affect us like you know Because we as humans, our memory is, uh, you know, how we remember things affects who we are. Mm -hmm. And so theoretically, Picard as a synth would almost have 100% perfect recall now. So does that change who he is in terms of memory? And uh, there's like so many different questions that you could raise philosophically with like him being a copy or not. And is he the same person? But yeah, I agree with you. The way they've kind of presented it both like on screen and like how they've talked about it. Um, you know, in interviews and things, is like, no, this is just Picard in a synthetic mm-hmm. body. Which is and kind of so, the vibe I was getting, which is why I, if that's the case, then I would then argue that it is Picard. Exactly. Yeah. And so I, 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 but I do hope that if we, that there is some ramifications to that going mm-hmm. into, that it wasn't just a way to like have this like, Fixes. oh, big, yeah, fixes like his um, ir- aromatic syndrome. Aromatic. Yeah, I think so. It's aromatic syndrome. Yeah, this is the the all good things thing. <laughs> it, it, this is, it's times like this when I when I get get a little stressed out that we don't have one of the guys with the uh, the uh, alpha <laughs> what is it uh, memory alpha level knowledge. To mm-hmm. just be like, yeah, that's what it was. <laughs> Yeah, I like we were talking before this. I was like, I can give you all the memory beta yeah. stuff. Like, you want some novel lore? I can give. <laughs> but when it comes to to memory alpha stuff, I sometimes forget too. But oh, no, please. Hmm? Oh, I was just gonna say, please go. I, oh I, yeah, no, no, you're good. I was just gonna say, you know, I, I, I totally agree with that point. Um, and that's yeah, a whole. I something I would like them to see or to see raised in season two. But you know, I guess while we're here talking about season two, we can move on to like you know, kind of speculation for season two. Um, mm-hmm. I kind of brought up a point that, and again, I know I said like if if my theory is correct, then. It, we're probably not going to see a lot. Well, that's not the case because there's always episodes. I think they set it up to be episodic again. That's been my theory mm-hmm. because the way they set it up, they have this long arc setting up the, the crew, getting a crew together. And then at the end of the episode, he's like, you know, it's basically just like the next gen. Like, let's see what's out there. Like, let's go on an adventure. They've got a whole crew. I think mm-hmm. that season two is going to be go from serialized to episodic style. But that being said, that's not, I mean, even the episodic Star Treks can have episode arcs like there there can still be arcs so i could see them adding an arc like that but my personal opinion and something i wouldn't even be opposed to would be giving it a little bit of a of an episodic feel again kind of like tng with like overarching uh plot yeah i i I actually completely agree and actually i think what would be cool is if they did like kind of like enterprise season four yeah where it's like mini arcs that also kind of fed into a larger arc Mm -hmm. like like there'll be a, like an over like let's randomly say like the overarching story is like Picard dealing with being a, being a synthetic, mm-hmm. but then so that's sort of like the through line through the season. But then you'll have like one or two episode mini arcs of like here's an episode and then it's resolved next episode of the episode after that, and then we have a whole no- another chunk of stuff um, as well. That would actually be that would actually be a lot of fun because then it's sort of like oh I don't have to like sort of have this story brought throughout the entire season right. and you know if the story doesn't work out then you're frustrated mm-hmm. which is what some elements in this season had but then you at least like but you still can have like these sort of longer form stories yeah. that i think made enterprise season four work so well 
and we and I think we got another uh, and donation. It. It's ten dollar. Thank you. Uh, my opinion: the copying of Picard's consciousness would be another person due to the fact that if Picard's original body did survive, you would have had two of them. Mm -hmm. And then we get into the philosophy again. Like, is yeah. a transporter accident of two people? Is it the same person twice? Like the Rikers, yeah. like the like yeah. I was gonna say the Thomas Riker, Thomas, yeah. Ri Thomas and Will Riker. Is it still Will? Like he had all his memories. He it was him up until that moment, and then they became mm -hmm. two separate entities. But you could argue that they are in fact the same person up until that point. So yeah, I would say if the body survived and they both lived separate consciousnesses and different like experienced things differently, I would argue they're two separate beings but with one but then it's like who <laughs> is, is is one more valid yeah, Picard? like they're both like valid. with thomas and will riker it's they're like they're both valid. riker yeah and so that's i think the argument that oops i'm knocking stuff over <laughs> i think that's the <laughs> argument that um that i think is the hardest part of of saying whether or not it is actually picard or not is you have all these hypothetical situations that, that raise a different question. And then it's like, okay, that question's answered, but then it raises another question. And then, and I do hope these are things that they address and talk about in season two, because if we can sit here and talk about it for this long, I'm sure they can find a way to put it in an episode and talk about yeah, exactly. it. Exactly. <laughs> so, I mean, wouldn't it be fascinating if like they brought like Thomas Riker back? Oh my gosh, that would be really <laughs> interesting. I would love that so much, actually. I want to see Quark show up. I know they already mentioned him, but I would mm -hmm. like to see him. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. I mean, Armin Shimmerman just existing yeah. is is everything. I mean, I I mean, I hope like if we're talking going back into like season two talk, like they they did a lot of Net TNG and Voyager stuff, and so I really hope like well, I do want Picard to have like the show to have its own identity. Mm -hmm. Um, it would be nice to see some Deep Space Nine stuff come up, like, it, and my own personal uh desire would be to be like can we learn what happens to cisco <laughs> yes I, that's, that's one of those things that because they they even say like they they hint they give you yeah. hope that he'll come back they hint at it they always mm -hmm. say like you know he, ah it's one of those open-ended things that's bothered me it's my favorite series and it's one of those questions where i'm like please give me closure and bother like please but mm. it's part of the reason I liked it is because it was left open ended. So yeah, now that they just didn't, it, it just felt like it kept going. So yeah, I, I agree. But it's also sort of like I would, I would love to check in on like what's Bashir okay. doing, or I'm, I'm assuming we'll possibly not, but I assume we'll get some hints of Dax in Discovery season be three because nice. they're going to trail. But yeah, see, but. I have a whole bunch of th yeah. You know what? While we're, while we're talking about theories, let's just go ahead and talk theories here because. Mm -hmm. um, something got brought up that makes me, I have a theory for season two of Picard, but also um, Discovery. But, uh, you know, yeah, we'll save Discovery for later. We'll stick to Picard for now. But Yeah, yeah I just brought up because No, you're fine. good. But the Jor I think Geordi's going to show up, and I'll tell you why. One, it was mentioned in season one to, that mm -hmm. he was brought up. Two, LeVar Burton's mentioned it. And three, like, they've made it very clear he's still alive, and I... I, I, given what LeVar Burton has tweeted and posted, and given the, the rumors I'm hearing, I, I would really mm -hmm. like to see Jordy come back, and I think it's it's going to happen. I'll be sad if it doesn't, but I think it will. It'd be interesting, like, uh, sorry, I just had a really, like, awkward and terrible thought um, <laughs> oh, with, with Jordy. Hugh? No, oh, no, 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 no. that Hugh was going to break my heart. No, mine was going to be, mine's, mine's much worse. Um, <laughs> So this is also good. so there was the rumors that Robert Picardo was going to be coming back for season two too, and so it's sort of like oh well maybe they'll like have a discussion about holographic rights mm -hmm. and like holograms having rights, and then I weirdly connected that with Jordy. I'm like, well, what if he's uh, married to the hologram? Oh <laughs> See, it's funny that, that you had a crush on. Yeah, it's funny that you mentioned hologram rights because that was actually something that I brought up all the way back and I think the first or second live stream I ever did with Trek Central was when mm -hmm. they mentioned the synthetic ban, I, I brought up the fact that, you know, how does that then affect the sentient uh, um, holograms? Like, you've got the Doctor, who I would consider sentient, and, yeah. and like... You know how would Moriarty. That, yeah, yeah. How would you, how would that affect them? Especially since, and what I had brought up before was in the episode um, where he makes the play, uh, where the where the doctor makes the play, and it gets distributed to the other uh, holograms. 
they mm -hmm. understand what he's writing about and like personally connect to it and in a sense in a way that makes me uncomfortable that there is now a that like when i watched it i was like that's the start of a of a of a hologram that's uprising a, like that's a battlestar galactica yeah. sort of so, uh, beginning <laughs> i would like to see something brought up about that because yeah how do the highly intelligent uh, holograms how were they affected by that because i while they're not synthetic they are artificial intelligence yeah and i mean it would it would kind of nicely build on those themes you know i think uh you could you you could build up the same themes that i think picard as a show really wants to deal with like sort of like using uh ai and like artificial intelligences as a representation for marginalized groups mm -hmm. so i think that 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 would be a really nice place to go and i think they kind of set that up too with uh with rios and his like sort of menagerie of holograms as well yeah um so it'd be an interesting sort of like setup for for that, but yeah, and then and then you could bring in um, Jordy would be sort of a natural evolution, disregarding his sort of relationship with a hologram, um, but like he's an engineer, and so yeah. like it would kind of be natural to bring him in to sort of like discuss like how holograms work, and then he could also connect that to his friendship with Data, and then also like what would Jordy's relationship with with Soji be? Like this daughter of his his best friend, I feel like that would also be a super wonderful um, place to explore. Yeah, there's a lot you could explore with bringing Jordy into the story a little bit, even if it's just for an episode, like what they did with Will and Deanna. Like just mm -hmm. just a, just something like that would be really cool to see and see kind of one check up on him and two see kind of how he's taking the information that like of everything that's happened in season one and applying it mm -hmm. to to the story. So those yeah. are, that's definitely something I would love to see. And one more thing too, I should mention, like, mm -hmm. I hope that it's not lost. Um, yeah, at some point, cause like, we also learned that there's a giant space, uh, <laughs> evil octopus. Thing. Yeah. Just floating around. What did Katwalski call it? He called it the synthopede. That's what he called it. <laughs> yeah. The synthopede. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It's a. I'm gonna call it that from yeah. now on. Yeah, that's um, what we've been calling it. <laughs> but yeah, it's sort of like, well, there's this giant existential threat that can yeah. come and destroy all life in the universe. That I like, a la the Reapers yeah. and Mass Effect. That I really hope we we address in some way. <laughs> Just stick that on the back burner for now, and we really hope nothing comes of it. It's fine. It's fine. It's we fine. Can fine. We'll be okay. Don't even worry about it. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we've talked like, so, oh, what's up oh no no that was i was i had another joke but oh. we can we can move on <laughs> i was gonna say we've talked so much about like and, and like stopped ourselves from talking about uh speculation for season two discoveries so like let's just go ahead and start getting on that because i feel like we both have a lot of stuff that we are excited about for season uh or season three sorry i'm still talking about picard in my head sorry season <laughs> three discovery we've already talked season two <clears throat> picard so, so you know theories and speculations of season three for discovery what what uh what do you got well I, first things first like i mean to too. yeah i mean I am so, so, I, I gotta be honest, like, I, I really liked Picard, and I liked it sort of evolution of the 21st century, but for some reason, like, Discovery, like, really, really speaks to me, I just, I adore the character so much, so what I am so excited for with that, too, is two things that I, that we definitely know are coming in season three of Discovery is, one, just for me personally, they are introducing a non-binary character, which... That. Which I'm so pumped for, yes. like being being non-binary myself. I'm like, that's that's sort of like speaking of like Star Trek's diversity and including more like identities. Like the fact that we're finally gonna have like a non-binary character who I hope is like like the 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 fact that she's non-binary or sorry, excuse me, they are non-binary. I'm screwing up pronouns. You're okay. <laughs> um, screwing up pronouns. Well, we don't know their pronouns yet, but um, like the fact that that we're gonna have a non-binary character within this show and hopefully we'll just be like considered part of the group and not, and not their non-binary i'm hoping yeah they even mention it that's what i'm hoping for because like they don't ever bring up like they never make um hugh and stamets's relationship seem anything other than the norm like they don't yeah. ever make it seem like oh you know uh, like like they would and look, maybe look how gay they yeah. are <laughs> gay. <laughs> like they're not they're not doing that so like yeah. I, I, I i'm hoping that the same sh that, th that they're treated with the same respect and and 
treated like it's just, you know, nothing. Like, it's not even kind of brought up kind of thing. Um, yeah. That would be nice. But then I hope. But also but then I hope... bringing up. Yeah, sorry. Oh. No, 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 sorry. Oh, I was just going to say, but maybe even, maybe hit, hinting at it, like maybe struggles, but not necessarily like forefront. Yeah, I mean, this is something that I talk about and like, this is like my, my whole channel is pretty much yeah. about, so I won't go too far on it, but I, like, when you bring in, like, there, there, it's certainly worthwhile to talk about like how trans non-binary people are mistreated and things like that, and that's what Star Trek's done through representation many times, but it's also like, if you bring in a, a character from these like minority groups, it's like, it's important not to discard their their backgrounds like the fact that they're not binary should inform their character mm -hmm. but it should but it should by no means be the main reason and then yeah. also what i also think is really cool is i do know that like gender uh, what's his face uh doug jones talked about in an interview that they want gender to be a discussion mm -hmm. in this season and i think what they the way they could do that would i think be super super wonderful through the trills because we know we're going back to the trill home planet and the trills are my favorite species in Star Trek. I do um, the trill. Yeah, so I think you could like have your cake and eat it too that way, where it's like you could have a non-binary character who just exists as a non-binary character, mm -hmm. but then talk about like issues of gender within the the trills and like kind of have that sort of alien race be used to talk about gender as a metaphor. I'm hoping they are trill. That's that, mm -hmm. that would be really cool. I would really. Like oh, to I would see love that, that so much. I would really much. love a, a non-binary trill character. That would be amazing. Oh. It wouldn't be hard to edit out the spots, you know, in the movie yeah. poster or the the show poster to make it so it's a surprise. So mm -hmm. I'm holding out for a non-binary trill character. That is my hope. And I know strong. exactly <laughs> what I'll be cosplaying as at yes. the at the next Star Trek convention. <laughs> <laughs> I know I have the perfect hair length for them, so that would be an amazing <laughs> cosplay. So I, I yes, I'm excited. But um, I guess on the topic of season three, something mm -hmm. that I've had in the back of my head and even more so rewatching the Zindi War arc is how, sh okay, I don't want to say sure, how much I hope that being catapulted to almost the exact same time as Daniel's is brought mm. up into the show because I kept, I was like double checking myself. I was like, okay, I'm like doing the math. I'm like, okay, Archer got sent, what was it? Uh, 900 years into the future or whatever it was. And Discovery got sent, uh, what did they get sent? 900 and something or was it 800 something? It was, I think it was 800 yeah, and, and some random yeah, thing. So it's so about, like, right. Yeah, and I was like, okay, you take that, you subtract it, it's about, it's like, give or take a few years, God, I, they better reference it. I'm like really holding out for some references to either A, the temporal war, temporal cold war, mm -hmm. B, Daniel, Crimin Daniels, or C, he Daniel. better show up. I want Crimin Daniels, <laughs> give me Crimin Daniels. <laughs> like, Please. What I love, I just like, I, uh, I love the fact I, that Star Trek, like as much as derided as Enterprise was when it came out, that mm -hmm. Enterprise has been the show that has gotten the most like references in modern Trek era. <laughs> Discovery, like um, Discovery's brought up, uh, brought uh, Enterprise up a few times, which I've, mm. I've always been kind of a supporter of Enterprise. Um, oh, I love Enterprise. I, yeah. I, I love it. <laughs> I do. It's it's one where like I, I see people like it's some of their least favorite. It's one of their least favorite series, and I'm like, listen, I I respect your opinion, but I also think you're wrong. <laughs> like, <laughs> no one's gonna bend or break me. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so yeah, I I would love to see Crimin Daniels or some reference to the Temporal Cold War or or just mm. any kind of. Something and also, like there was the time ships. There was the time ships in um in so Voyager like, yeah. as well. That around that time as well. So like there's there's all sorts of wibbly wobbly timey wimey yeah. stuff. And we know that uh, Georgia has to time travel back to get to her uh section like section thirty one. So, yeah. yeah. So so there's got to be some sort of wibbly wobbly timey wimey stuff going on um in that season. I'm super excited, and I'm hoping Daniels plays a role in that. Like, we know Daniels can mm -hmm. so easily bring people like in and out of of different time, er like different eras mm -hmm. of time. So I could see him playing a role in getting Giorgio back, uh, and I would be extremely excited if he showed up. So I'm fingers crossed. Got two things I'm hoping for now: <laughs> non-binary <laughs> trill and crewman Daniels. I am I am so all about that. Like I just what what I just watched the other I just watched um Shockwave. <laughs> I yeah. love that try. By the way, hi try. I didn't get a chance to say hi earlier. Um, but uh, I was just watching Shockwave part one and part two. The like season. That's a good one. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Two, and they're it, end of one, beginning of two, right? Yeah, yeah, and they actually like Archer actually goes to the future, mm-hmm. and like, there's like the implication I think by Daniels is that like because there's like a statue to the Federation, but he kind of implies that the Federation no longer exists. Yeah, and that's too? why I had watched that right before watching the Zindi War arc, and that's what really put the idea back in my head. Oh, so you cut out a little bit for me. Oh, sorry, I was saying. I was saying that's the same thing that made me think of it is because I had watched Shockwave Part 1 and 2 right before watching the Cindy War arc. And mm-hmm. I was like, man, the Federation doesn't exist. That And the time fits so perfectly. It's like Discovery Season 3. Discovery Season 3. Please. They just like blow up the se- <laughs> blow up the Federation. It's all going down. <laughs> I just would love uh. to see some kind of like... Because they never finished out the Temporal Cold War arc, which bothered me a lot. Mm-hmm. So it would they be like really- kind of they kind of like yada yada at the yeah, end at the beginning like, of season hey, four. Stuff happens. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. it's gone now. It is fine. We we dealt with like alien Nazis. It's fine. Yeah. So I would have loved <laughs> to see some you know exploration of that arc further, especially in New Trek. Um, mm-hmm. And and that's just you know one of those things where I would I would really like to see. Yeah. No. I I and like. <laughs> The idea of the idea of a temporal cold war, like it was one of those like ideas that was super cool in Enterprise that I just wish got more play. Mm-hmm. Cause like this idea that everyone can mess around in time, but everyone's kind of like not, but like surreptitiously trying to like go back and like change, like tweak little things that yeah. have drastic repercussions, and sort of seeing that from the opposite end like the opposite side of, of, of that equation where it's not like, like they can kind of see all of history and mess with it from there. Mm-hmm. And supposed to just enterprise being like one piece of that puzzle. Um, I think is would be such like a fun, fun evolution of that concept. Absolutely. So we have someone said, forget Daniels, forget Giorgio. Oh, by the way, far point station. Thank you. Uh, forget <laughs> Daniels, forget Giorgio. Give me more Mott. <laughs> Who? Why am I blanking on Mott? I'm, I'm also on. blanking on Mott, and someone's saying and, uh, the. I, I'm really is he, oh, he's he's the. I just looked it up. He's the. Is he the the barber on a uh, on, on uh, uh, next, next generation? Generation. Oh, is he the the, the yeah uh, yeah. Yeah, Bolian civilian yeah, barber. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The one who always oh, like yeah, had awkward conversations. Yeah, and they referenced him in um uh Picard in where, Star of City. Yeah, and start a city where he's got his own little shop. Yeah, I would, I would love to see that, like, um, like a, just a hair show, like Star Trek hair, just a, just a hairstylist show. <laughs> like Every- just like a big reality star is like, yeah. all right, we're gonna, we're gonna get you some. Uh- <laughs> yeah. um, oh, that would be Ma wonderful. Hosts the future of queer eye for the straight guy. <laughs> <laughs> queer, queer eye for the bullying guy. Yes. yes. <laughs> Or Bully and I for the queer guy, yes, something like I that. I love it. Yes, future Star Trek series. You're welcome, CBS. <laughs> oh. yeah. And someone just said, "I hope Grappler Zorn is in Picard Discovery." <laughs> get some Grappler, get Grappler Zorn, the guy from uh, the who ran Farpoint Station, mm-hmm. which is like the most like that was like that's that a name. So strange. Yeah, it's like I'm weird. My name's Grappler. Like I don't know. Your most defining feature is you have a weird name. The only guy who I can think. <laughs> me out a little more is the one episode in enterprise um where they get stuck on that mining facility and the guy with like the breathing apparatus with the terrible voice oh like, yeah 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 i'm like oh god please my ears like i can't take it i hate that sound like his voice is so like oh. it was all the so one that always creeps me the character that always creeps me out in Trek is like the the dude, like the weird like Beauty and the Beast episode they did for Enterprise during the, oh, the yeah, with, yeah with where it's like Hoshi, Hoshi. Yes! yeah, and he's just like, come live with me in my weird <laughs> temple planet. Please, I'm not creepy at all. Experience <laughs> Stockholm syndrome with me. Yeah. <laughs> Oh dear heaven's sake! That that guy always yeah. creeped me the hell out. Because <laughs> like the whole mind screwing with her at the end, where he's like he acts like he's gonna be a good guy, and he's like, yeah, no, pack up, you can go. And then he comes out as Archer, and he's like, hey, listen, like it'd be super great if you could just stay here with this guy. We'll pick you up later. Don't even worry about it. And I'm like, what? what? That's terrible. That's don't do that. <laughs> yeah, Archer. <laughs> Archer's. Archer, I, I love Archer, but he's a terrible captain. <laughs> oh, well, no, this was the guy posing as him, that, and that's why oh, I was yeah, saying, yeah. yeah, and that's why I was saying, right. like, the whole, like, it made me uncomfortable with, like, the guy, like, mm-hmm. posing as Archer and being like, no, it's fine, like, you can stay here, and, like, trying to mindfuck her even more with, like, thinking that, mm-hmm. that it was Archer asking this, and, like, the whole guy, like, just the guy's gaslight. so creepy, he's just- yeah. 
It was like gaslighting the episode. I do not like him. I agree. <laughs> but <laughs> since anyways, yeah, I kind of got off topic there, but I, okay. that, I, I talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> but since we are ending the uh, uh, nearing the end of the stream, I'm I mm -hmm. think we can maybe open up uh, some conversation points from stream, like anything stream yeah. wants to hear us talk about. I know there's a little bit of a delay, so um, but yeah, if you guys have anything that you would like to see us or hear see us or hear hear us discuss um, about all things Star Trek, let us know, um, and I will I will save Dax. <laughs> yeah, I would love to I save will, Dax. I would. Uh, I mean, I'm so. I mean, anything with more Dax mm -hmm. just makes me makes me personally happy. Dax is one of my like, favorite I, characters. We're just gonna hold on. Where's my pride and joy? Um, no, I mean, no, if you look no. at my, I don't know if you can see on my screen, I have my creepy, I don't know if you can see her in the dark, the corner there. Yes. I have my Dax <sighs> cut out, like hiding in the corner over there. She's, she's like, just creepy, creepily hanging out. She's so sweet. <laughs> I guess, if, but no, for real, she is very, very sweet. Um, hmm. But yeah, I love the character of Dax. I, I just very much related to her and, and loved her a lot. Mm -hmm. um, like, like with me, like, um, uh, this is something I always said. I identify with both Ezria and Jedzia. Like Jedzia was always the character that I wanted to be. Like this, like badass, like very, like, like, like aware of her identity. Like very feminine, but also like I'm gonna kick your butt yeah. and like be like right up there with all the like the Klingon badasses. And then Ezri was the character that I feel like I am. Like I don't know what's going on. I hope <laughs> I can figure myself out at some point. But we're just gonna keep going. <laughs> So. <laughs> yeah, I saw that YouTube video that you did. It was really good. And I, yeah, I definitely well, agree thanks. with just about every point you made. I was just like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I, I absolutely agree. And it took me a, a watch because I did not like Ezri the first time that I watched Deep Space Nine because I felt like they robbed me of my my one true love, Jadzia. And mm -hmm. it was like really hard to see another character on screen as Dax. But then on my second watch through, I was like, Man, I really love Ezri because like she's trying her best, damn it. Like she really is. <laughs> like she she doesn't like the people on the crew, they don't see her as, you know, one of them truly like they did with with Jadzia at least for Just a while did. just because of the situation she got put in. So, I really mm -hmm. I absolutely adore that character. Yeah. And I am seeing a bunch of questions in the mm -hmm. chat if you yeah. want to I don't know if you want to pick one. Um, what are our wishes for Picard season two? I think that kind of goes into um, kind of what I was theorizing, because I actually do want to see some episodic uh, Picard yeah. season two. I think that would be really neat. Um, so, And I hope that, and I also hope the other one, if they do a Pike show, like I hope the Pike show is also yeah, like kind of episodic. Like TOS well. style. Yeah, yeah, like you can again have like recurring arcs, like maybe give Pike like maybe his whatever his thing with the time crystal, yes. like give him sort of like a character arc with that, but then have like individual episodes within that. Ooh, this is a good one uh, for a topic. Uh, mm -hmm. Will the Kelpians be known as a race of Klingon like badasses in the future era? Because like, yeah, this is a topic that <laughs> they my, did. my brother and me talk about this all the time when we talk about discoveries. Like, yeah, that's like my, my brother's super on the side of just, um, Kelpians being the most badass character in Star Trek. He's like, yeah, that's great and all, but like, can you run a hundred miles an hour? Can you shoot <laughs> spines from your like neck? Can you do? No, I didn't think so. And I'm like, okay, yeah, like that's true. And they like now have no fear whatsoever. Yeah. Like you just see Saru, he's just sort of like, I don't give a crap anymore. Like whatever, <laughs> crew members fighting in the ship, they're gonna duke it out. I'm all for it. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> That would actually be a, that would actually be a lot of fun to like sort of see the the evolution of the Kelpian race. Absolutely. And also, we're getting more of Morn species in in Discovery season three Are too, we? which I'm. Yeah, they <gasps> in the trailer they showed they had like all the I people like it. running with like the blaster arms, and uh, one of one of Morn's race I forget the name of his yeah. race uh, is is running in that crowd. I'm like, oh hey, and we get Cardassian <laughs> back too, oh, which that's is cool. also a cool. See, I totally yeah. missed uh, Morn's race, like. I, I totally it's a, did not it's a catch blinking that. Miss yeah. You have to like, you, it's one of those like you have to freeze awesome. frame it and uh, and find it, yeah. That's definitely something, that, that's cool because Morn is such a great character. He says so much, <laughs> I swear. He never shuts up. <laughs> he has like the deepest thoughts in, in all of Star Trek. Like yeah. I, every time he's on screen, I'm like, I know I'm going to get some deep philosophy here. <laughs> it's like, I don't know if you know that one 
episode of like the original SpongeBob where like Gary's on stage, he's meow, meow, meow. and Sandy's like, wow, he has such a way with words. Like that's <laughs> Morn. That's Morn right now. I, it reminds me of this one. Like he goes into like the dreams and like, yes. uh, like he's like a big professor. Yes. <laughs> so yeah, that's. I would love to see more and more, and that would be so great. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. How many different ways can you think of Hugh would be brought back? Um, I, I personally just don't think they're bringing Hugh back. That's just a personal opinion. I really don't think they are. Um, if I was going to guess how, everyone's brought up the Borg nanoprobes, but that's the only way mm. I can think. That or like a, you could hologram them or something yeah. like that. There's always like weird ways of doing it, but yeah, I, it would just, I mean, it would just start to undercut things. I mean, the irony of like yes. if they brought him back and be like, oh. It undercuts any it, other death. Yeah, and they've already done it, it again. I bring this up. I like they've already brought back one Hugh because they realized they made a mistake, and so it's sort of like, as much as I did not want to see Hugh go, and I love him, and I would love to see Jonathan Del Arco back because he's a wonderful human and mm-hmm. and adds so much to it. It's also sort of like if you keep doing that and you keep like, as writers, if you keep like making these death decisions and then not sticking with it, it kind of undercuts the drama. Yeah. Um, of it. And that's an issue with not just Star Trek, but shows and movies in general is. Mm-hmm. is when you kill a character but then you resurrect them it undercuts any other permanent character death because then you ask well why couldn't this technology or this method or this or that be used to save this character or that character it's one of the issues mm-hmm. that marvel has with their characters yep. dying and, and being brought back and it things get undercut it's like okay cool you brought all these people back why can't you do it for this person or that person like yeah. it, and so it's it's a slippery slope it's to, to travel when when killing a character and and that's why personally I don't think they're bringing Hugh back because I, I think they understand that bringing him back would kind of undercut any future deaths but that doesn't mean I'm not disappointed that he died because I very yeah. much am yeah I agree and I mean there's ways you could do like a like maybe have him in like an episode like like I said hologram or like maybe this is me off the cuff like maybe seven has to like hook into the the Borg system again. Mm-hmm. And like the the like, person she talks to while she's in there, like she's having like these dream state things, and Hughes her guide yeah. in that that sort of like idea. I could see something so, like that, like yeah, like a, yeah, like a memory thing, or not even memory, but like um, yeah, yeah like, like a one-off happened. guest episode thing. Yeah. Um, and then someone, right, let's see, it was uh, CS said uh, to everybody, who do we think? Uh, what do we think is going to premiere first, Discovery season three or Lower Decks? I am so excited yes, it- for Lower Decks. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. I am so so pumped. like that's uh, that's what that's why I really love this current era of like Trek is there's that so we're getting so much variety. Yes, there's yeah. so yeah. much. Like if you want something funny, you got something funny. If you want something serious, you got something serious. Like there's always something mm-hmm. for someone, and that's what I'm so excited about. Lower decks is exactly what we need right now, which is why I'd like to hope that it premieres first because some comedy yeah. in our lives would be great. Um, but and I, I also think, like, if we're talking, like, real-life stuff, too, like, Disco is going to have to, like, be delays. put on the back burner just because mm-hmm. they can't do, like, the orchestra, and I'm sure, like, visual effects are going to be a pain in the butt with everything going on in the world right now, but with, uh, from, according to Justin Roiland, like, they can, they're still going ahead strong on Lower Decks because it was already mostly, uh, mostly remote work already, yeah. so... So I think so that might that might come up first. Yeah, we'll do one last uh, comment thing before we wrap up stream because we have a donation mm-hmm. from Amir. It said, "What if Discovery season three is the, a possible future where the Federation lost the temporal cold war?" And that is a Ooh. very interesting point. I like that a lot because that's true. Um, it could be that future where he said that statue of the Federation, like it doesn't exist or something like that. Well, no, because that's if Archer didn't exist. But he, I could absolutely see some kind of change to the temporal timeline affecting it and and causing the federation to crumble and and thus be season three which i would be 100 percent about i mean they do say in um in the trailer like uh she shows uh burnham shows the guy the new character starfleet badge and says oh you believe in ghosts Mm -hmm. so there's like the implication that even if the federation's kind of still around starfleet definitely is not right and so that's so. that's definitely a point that I think is really exciting and something I I like like I said I'd love for that to be brought up as a as as a story point I think mm-hmm. either Daniels or the Temporal Cold War or some kind of variation of of 
a possible future without the Federation are all really cool ideas. And I'm super excited about that. And let's get us that Enterprise J. Yes. Like, come on. <laughs> <laughs> the like ridiculously huge ship. Yeah. But thank- like, did you ever see the, oh, oh sorry. No, please keep going. <laughs> I was just going to mention that uh, that's one of my favorite things is just like uh, talking about exponential size increases. If you ever look at like a picture of like scales of the different enterprises and you see like the enterprise Enterprise (laughs) and then the enterprise J is like this big. Yeah, it's like, ah, it goes off screen. (laughs) It's fine. It's fine. (laughs) But I think with that, we are probably going to wrap up the stream for today. Um, yeah. But I do want to say thank you to everybody who donated it. It means a lot. And I like the conversation points. It was a lot of fun. Um, I also want to thank the beautiful Jesse for coming on our screens today and talking about Star Trek with us. And thank you for having me. It was really wonderful. Secondarily plug your stuff before I plug Trek Central. Go for it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, check me out. I mean, just uh, search me in the little YouTube search bar, Jesse Gender. Uh, two words I talk about, like I said, um, mostly Star Trek, but I try and talk about like social, political, LGBTQ issues through geek culture. So like using, you know, Star Trek Picard to talk about issues of citizenship and things like that. So trying to like dig into the the actual like philosophy and, and politics of the different shows. So that's that's what my channel is about. If that sounds at all interesting to you. It's a great to you. channel. You should. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Yeah. I really appreciate it. But, and then if you guys want to follow us here on Trek Central for anything, we've got Twitter, which is the Trek Central. We've got Facebook and Instagram. And then if you're interested, we also have a Discord, which we will link below. And if you feel like following me for just random stuff on Twitter, my, my handle is right, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I do a lot of cosplay stuff and just random conversations. But that's that's about it. So uh, I wanted to thank everybody for coming on the stream today. It was great. And thank you, Jesse, for being a phenomenal guest. And I will. Thanks for being a phenomenal host. Oh, thank you. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> thank you for everybody in stream who came by and checked us out. Uh, we will see you.